Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy and this video is a short presentation on generating effect size statistics to complement pairwise comparison results from the estimated marginal means function in our studio. Uh, the rationale or the motivation for this video is often when I would review papers or manuscripts that would have results from ANOVAs or linear mixed models that effect size statistics would be presented to complement or to support the results from the, the mixed model, the linear mixed model or the ANOVA. But when a researcher maybe might progress to doing um, the pairwise comparisons or the post hoc test, often the effect size statistics are actually just missing from that uh, part of the results. And I felt that it would just might be just useful to put together a short video to show, look, how do we generate the effect size statistics from the pairwise comparisons that can be uh, presented alongside the p-values va from a post hoc or pairwise comparison test. And in this case here, I'm just going to be using the estimated marginal means function in our studio. So I'm going to first start off by just having, I suppose, setting up the data frame. So I'm going to look at where there's 90 participants. That's what line three is doing there. I'm just going to label them one to 90. There, uh, there's going to be three treatment groups, we'll say, so to speak here, or, or, so, or more so we can think of it as our between subjects factor has three levels, 30 participants per level. Then I'm going to look at where there's going to be a within subjects factor that also has three levels. Line nine then is going to set that all up as a data frame. Line 11 then is converting the ID variable to an actual factor, which is obviously helpful for the repeated measures ANOVA or a linear mixed model, whichever one you're going to run off. Uh, the latter being the one that we we'll use in this video. Line 12 then is setting the between subjects factor as an actual factor. Line 15 and 16 is converting the data to a long form. And line 18 then is setting the within subjects factor of time as an actual factor. And this will give us the data here. And just to view it, just so we can just see what data frame we actually have. So we can see we have our participant ID, a between subjects factor, a within subjects factor, and then our measurement. And obviously the participant ID is going to be seen as our random effect here in this case. Just have a picture to what we're, uh, what we're working with as opposed to working towards really, because we're not overly interested in, I suppose, in interpreting the results. It's more just generating results here. But what we can see in this case here is that there appears to be a change over time, uh, but that change over time is consistent between the groups. Okay, looking at the graphic down on the bottom right hand side of my screen here. So I'm going to run off the linear mix model. Uh, there's obviously a few variations of this script that we could use in this case, or you could even run it off as a repeated measures ANOVA. There's another video that I have up on the YouTube channel, the link to it is here which uh, I suppose showcases various scripts that are available in our studio and not, no, it's not an exhaustive list, but it gives a couple of, uh, I suppose, sets of script that are available in our studio to do repeated measures ANOVA and to do um, linear mixed models. The one I'm going to be going with is I'm going to look at the LMER function from the LMER test uh, package uh, for, for the purposes of this video. But uh, there are other, uh, I suppose, functions out there. And in below, in the description below the, here, there is a link to uh, GitHub where you'll have access to all the script that has been used in this video as well. Okay, so if we run off the linear mix model, what we can see here is there's no difference between the groups. So that's what the first part here is. There is a difference between the time points and there is no difference in time or between the groups. So there's no difference in the measurement over time between the groups. That's what we're seeing here with the interaction effect, okay? Now, if you're looking for a rationale or a kind of explanation to what the uh, the setup to LMER is under those arguments, that's what the uh, video uh, with the link on line 28 will actually help with in that one, okay? So we want to then generate the effect size statistics, and this is often what I would see in a paper, which is obviously very good, not complaining with this about this whatsoever, but this is given the effect size of the overall model, which in this case here, the group has a small effect, time, there's a large effect, and then the interaction effect is also small in this case. And this is where we're using partial letter squared as the classification. And I just state the, the classification for partial letter squared there just for information purposes as well. And look, this is brilliant. There's nothing wrong with this. If we were to progress this though, is if we have significant results in our ANOVA, then we want to progress to do a post hoc test or a pairwise comparison. And what I would just find useful is when I present those p-values from the post hoc test or the pairwise comparison, that those p-values will be complemented with the effect size statistics as well. The fact that there are compar comparisons or pairwise comparisons, then that's obviously where you're looking at complementing them with oh, Cohen's D. Okay, so estimated marginal means first. Let's look at producing them. I'm going to produce it for a main effect. I'm going to use time as the main effect, and then I'm going to produce it for a simple main effect so that you'll just see the similarity between the scripts, but there's obviously just a slight uh, distinction between them as well. 
when I'm looking at uh, the, I suppose, the main effect, the time main effect, I'm going to use the estimated marginal means package. That's line 44, so I'm loading the library there. Then I'm taking the results that we have from line 30, and I'm looking at the differences in that over time. So that's what uh, line 45 is doing. And I'm comparing those, uh, adjusting for multiple comparisons used in Tukey. And when we get that, then here, what we're seeing is we have significant difference at each of the time points. So between time one and time two, time one and time three, time two and time three, there are significant differences. The output from this on line 45, I'm calling it P for the P value and then underscore EMM1 for estimated marginal means one. Obviously, you can call that anything you want. Now, what is obviously lacking here, there's two things that I would feel is lacking here from this output. One is the confidence interval. That's a quick, easy fix. And the other is the effect size. Now, the effect size is an easy enough fix once you're aware of the script, but that's what I'm going to show in this video as well. Okay, so let's see. How do we get the effect size? Well, first, what we actually need are the estimated marginal means. So on line 45, the output that we got are the differences between the estimated marginal means. So the estimated marginal mean time one versus time two, here's the difference. What we need to work out the effect size is we actually need the estimated marginal means at each of the time points. So that's what line 48 is going to do. Then line 49 is going to work out the actual effect size. So in line 48, when we work out the estimated marginal means, I'm calling the output EMM1. Then in line 49, uh, I'm taking the uh, using sorry the f size or f underscore underscore size function, taking the estimated marginal means that the output that we have from line forty eight. I need to have an estimate for the variation in the population. So the population variation, now obviously, we very rarely know what that is. So we use an estimate from the result that we have from our linear mixed model or from our repeated measures in Nova. So in this, how we isolate that is we use the sigma function. So sigma of results. So result obviously being the uh, output from the actual linear mixed model. And then we also need an estimate of the degrees of freedom. Again, we generally don't know what that is exactly. So the estimate then will be using the degree dot freedom, sorry, the uh, df dot residual of the result again from the uh, linear mixed model. And when we run that off on line 49 here, this is the output we get, which is really nice. We have our three effect sizes. Okay, so time one against time two, time one, time three, time two, time three. We have our effect size. What's also quite nice is it gives us the confidence interval of the effect sizes as well. Now, I'm not overly interested in that at the moment. That's actually going to be something I'm going to talk about in a later video. But at the moment, really, what I'm interested in is that effect size result here. And we can see there, if we look at the Cohen's D classification, which goes kind of from 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, we can see that all the effect sizes here are actually large. We have all large effect sizes. Now, if, we, if I shoot back up to the previous one, just to kind of refresh, if I go to line 35, what we found here from line 35 is that overall the difference across time is large. If you look at the partial at square, that's what line uh, 35 is giving. What line 49 is, do, is doing though, is it's looking at each individual of the time points and comparing them against each other. So it's going a step further than the actual ANOVA. And to me, that, that is something that's quite useful. Now, that's essentially how we get the effect size. And I suppose you'd often see, uh, going by my previous videos, that I'd be a big fan or a big advocate of presenting the results uh, well uh, and clearly. So our studio is brilliant for producing the results, but then it's up to us to actually put all the results together and communicate them in a nice, coherent and concise manner. So I'm just going to give a, a sample way of doing that here. So based on look what I find useful in my own experience as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do look here is I'm going to, well, I want to get the confidence intervals for the, the differences that we have. Okay, so P underscore EMM1 is just the, the p-values, the results that we have from Tukey. I'd like to actually get the confidence intervals for them as well, so I'm just going to put the, that around brackets like that. And so this is actually giving me the confidence intervals as well. No, that's not a requirement, but it's something that I find quite useful. So this is the confidence interval of the differences. I need to convert p underscore emm1 to a data frame. Uh, the effect size result that I have up on line 49, I want to convert that to a data frame as well. And then I'm going to pull all the various bits together and uh, as an overarching data frame. So I'm going to take the P underscore EMM1, look at the contrast, which is basically the name of the effect, which is the differences that I'm working out. I'm going to take the actual difference, the estimated marginal means, and round it to one decimal place. I'm going to take the confidence intervals and round them to one decimal place. The P values around that to three decimal places. And then the effect size and rounding them to two decimal places. Okay, so I'll do that here. I'm going to relabel the columns. And then I'm going to get this output here. Okay, so to me, this is quite nice. So I have my effect, which is the various time points, the differences between the time points. Then I have the estimated marginal means, uh, the confidence intervals of those means, the p-value. I'm not a fan of that. I'm going to talk, sh show you a way of working on that. I'm never a fan of presenting p-values of zero. P-value is never zero. It's just going to be very, very small. So I think that's something that's quite important to be clear on. So I'm going to fix that up in a second. 
and then we have our three effect size statistics. So now we have our effect size statistics to complement our pairwise comparisons. Now, I suppose just to pick, fix up that uh, p-value one there, I'm going to take this p-value. This is something that I'd often do uh, is uh, get our studio to re rewrite or uh, rephrase what that p-value should be. So if the p-value is less than 0 0.0001, then state it as less than 0 0.0001 otherwise round it to three decimal places so this is often a uh, trick that i would use like this so it's not really a trick and that's a nicer way from that i would feel that we would present those p-values that they're less than 0 0.001 as opposed to stating with zero stating with zero would not be accurate okay so that's quite uh, nicely done i think anyway i hope i hope you agree and if you agree then liking the channel uh, liking this video would be great or uh, sharing it and equally now you might have comments or suggestions of maybe a more efficient uh, tech uh, script that you can use and I'm happy more than happy for you to put them down below in the comment section as well now just to close this off if we look at the simple main effects because there's very little tweaking to this but I suppose just for completeness I'm going to look at the simple main effect now it's not significant but if we wanted to work out what the effect size is maybe for our power analysis to inform a future study so we get our p-values first obviously the p-value doesn't have the confidence intervals in this so this is our uh, p-values across each of our time points so I'm looking at the difference between the groups at each of the time points time one time two time three so this is where we have nine p-values same process here so I'm going to first need to work out the estimated marginal means I'm calling it emm2 in this case so this is just taking the result and just looking at the difference between the groups with uh, while holding fixing time okay so that's what line 71 is doing line 72 is very similar as before f underscore size the name of the estimated marginal means output and then again sigma result d df dot residual of the results as well so this is what we get the output is the exact same structure as i've done up above i want to work out the confidence intervals that's what i'd like to know as well that's only just because i'd like the confidence intervals of the differences to be presented in the final table the, the p values that's what i want here so i'm making that a data frame line 72 is making the f size output as a data frame as well line 78 is putting it all together okay so the only additional bit here is where we need an extra column here because obviously we have a second factor which is going to be time so i just put in that in as extra column pull it together like this here's our output and boom this is where we have okay so we've did three different time points time one repeated three times time two repeated three times and time three repeated three times we have or the, the effect that we're interested in which is the difference between the groups our estimated marginal means the confidence interval of those estimated marginal means and these are obviously the differences so the confidence interval of those differences the p-values and then here are our effect size which are, are obviously in this case which we call c and look so that's it uh, again in the description below there's uh, there's a link to github where you'll have access to, to the script if you find it of use and again if you do find this, this video of use then if liking and sharing it is great and if you want if you haven't already done so subscribe to the channel uh, and you'll have access to when uh, more videos are going to be uploaded uploaded in the weeks and months ahead Okay, that's it for now. All the best. Goodbye.